Previously on Delos, we met some lifelong friends. Sailed Delos to the crazy city of Manila. And had a Filipino style Easter. Awesome sail right now. We've just left Matuid Bay, just south of Manila, and we had a really awesome time in Manila. I didn't really know what to expect, but we met some really amazing people there, and they really showed us around, and it was just a cool time. But now we're a bit partied out, so we're heading to uh, Apple Reef, which is just west of Mindoro. And then we're headed down to uh, Palawan and Coron, which we're really excited about, so it should be awesome. A few days ago, we dropped our mooring at the Manila Yacht Club and were met with an incredible sunrise as we motored out of the bay. Our friends Rhi and Aiden were with us for part of the trip. Rhi had invited us to our family's beach house for the weekend ocean front of course. So we anchored Delos and were treated to an amazingly chill weekend with some crazy good food and great massages. And now it was back to just Karen and I on Delos. Which meant me holding the camera while Karen did all the work. Why is it southeast? When is the northeast monsoon? Because we want to go southeast. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> We arrived in Apple Reef at first light and dropped our hook on a small sandy patch. Anchorages like Apple with fringing, protective barrier reefs are my absolute favorite. They're shallow enough for anchoring and offer awesome protection. Yet with no land around, it's like being anchored in a calm lagoon in the middle of the ocean. You can get a real sense of solitude out here. No land, no noise, no people.
We spent a few awesome days at Apo, just lounging around and chasing fishes. But we'd heard about a crazy island with African animals roaming around. Apparently it was less than a day's sail south. So we hoisted my favorite mizzenblooner and set sail for Corone Palawan. So we've just arrived in Baswanga Island, which is the northern part of the Palawan group. And we've heard this strange rumor that there's supposed to be some sort of uh, African animal reservation somewhere around here. So we're going to see if we can go uh, track it down and have a look. Crazy. That's what I was saying yesterday. So the only directions we have is it says it's in the west part of the bay in a little inlet with some mangroves. So this kind of looks like there's mangroves and it's definitely west. So we'll see if this is it. There's some mangroves over there. And we have a big, old, medium-sized house over here. Cool. It really did exist. And for the price of about 100 pesos, you could get a personal guided tour. The story goes that a past Filipino president, one known for terribly wise investments of the country's resources, decided to save some African animals from their native Africa and bring them to this island in the Philippines. Some said it was a private hunting reserve and nothing more, but nobody really knows. There's about 35 giraffes on the island, all of them roaming free except this poor guy that hurt himself. So he was here in this pen being looked after. Yeah, no problem there, the, the king. They've been here so long and adapted so well that all the giraffes on the island were born here. And some are now approaching 30 years old. Ah, giraffe breath. I know, he has a pretty bad breath, huh? <laughs> There are also some native Filipino species here on the island, all living together in some bizarre harmony. It's like hissing at you. Okay. Aw, he's really angry at you. Yeah, he'll be okay though. <laughs> The Philippines are always surprising us like this. What a completely random experience to pull Delos up to an island in the Philippines, dock Nagi, and be able to roam around with giraffes and zebras. Yep. It's getting pretty empty in there. It had been about two weeks since leaving Manila, and the fridge was showing it. We were in Pearl Bay, Caron, which is an island in northern Palawan. It's a great anchorage, but pretty far from anything resembling a store. It was a two-mile dinghy ride to the closest Sari Sari store, where we hoped to stock up on some fresh stuff.
Yeah, so we're just getting some fresh fruits and vegetables. So some apples, and we have some tomatoes, cucumber, a little bit of beans here. And we also have like... 140. 140. Uh, 140. Okay, do you have the garlic? Garlic. And onions? Yeah. They only had two apples, which was a little bit sad because, I don't know, we haven't had fresh fruit in like two weeks and I'm really craving some, you know, like juicy mango or something. But they had two apples. So, now we just have to wash everything. Wait, so crazy. <laughs> Uh, tomatoes that are not really ripe and they will never be but uh, they taste okay the only two potatoes and they only had two eggs which was a little bit sad but it's okay down here. In the main? Real hot. Yeah, in the main. Last time we changed it was in uh, Indonesia, so it's due right now. We'd been chilling in this beautiful spot, doing some cruiser stuff like changing the oil, replacing impellers, and hoisting our internet stick to the top of the mast to try and get a better signal. Every once in a while it would rain and cool stuff down, but mostly it was just frickin' hot. In the afternoon, we'd head off to the resort next door to drink a few San Miguels and enjoy the amazing view. Well, it's quite a good, good hill here, but... It makes you real fit and it's definitely worth it when you get up there. It's really nice and the sunset is beautiful. Oh. It was a totally cruiser friendly place. Just drink a few beers and eat dinner every once in a while. We pretty much had it all to ourselves. They even let us use their internet to upload videos. 14% cruising. And I had to reset it twice. This rate, who knows? Maybe today. And then one day we asked what all the dive boats were doing in the bay. Oh, you didn't know? There's an entire Japanese World War II fleet sunk out there. Seriously? So we just got in totally ready to go in Zingy and zoom over to the Akichima Rec, I think it's called. Uh, it's really cool. It's like about, yeah, yesterday we went down to about 36 meters, I think. And it's just like you can swim through this wreck and it was so clear water like and this is fish like schools of fish everywhere like hunting going on and massive big like lionfish like this just like zooming around waiting for something to get close to them 
it's really really nice so I did my first uh, decompression stuff which was pretty interesting there's a lot of things going on on the computer but I think it will be better today it's hard to believe that a little over 70 years ago there was a massive battle raging here it was the midst of World War II and the Japanese were marching across the Pacific the tranquil settings were disrupted by U.S. planes dive-bombing the Japanese fleet. There's 10 known Japanese wrecks in the Crone area, and they're all marked with floats and lines for the local dive operators. So for the past few weeks, we've been moving Delos around, jumping from wreck to wreck, and zooming around in Maggie with all our gear. It was awesome! We were doing multiple dives a day, and best of all, it was just us. We pretty much had the entire place all to ourselves. I always like to think about what these wrecks looked like above water. Who was the last person to walk on this deck and hold this rail? What were they thinking when their entire world was shaken apart by an immense explosion? But maybe the coolest thing is this war machine, once purpose for so much destruction, is now a home to some of the most peaceful creatures on the planet. As the days progressed, we began to penetrate deeper and deeper into the wrecks, always finding another cool passageway to explore. The diving was somewhat technical because of the depths, so we were using hang tanks and the decompression profiles of our computers. But the passageways were open, and there was always a visible way out, which was really comforting. I'm always swept by a feeling of nervous excitement on a wreck of knowing that this entire structure was once a fully functioning ship, but now sits on the ocean floor. It's especially cool to recognize steering gear, engine controls, or even unexploded ordnance. As if the experience wasn't amazing enough already, you then get to exit through a bomb hole into a school of hunted bait fish. We ended up spending almost a month here, hopping from wreck to wreck, spending as much time as possible underwater to escape the heat, and of course, enjoy the ridiculous sunsets. Next on Delos. We lose track of time in El Nido. Survive some crazy squalls and get ready to leave our beloved Philippines. Let it be whatever it be, everything will be alright. You have certainty within you, close your eyes and look inside.
I'm writing to my mom that she can't comment on the Delos page as SD Delos. She has to be herself. <laughs> Busted. Previously on Delos, we met some lifelong friends. Sailed Delos to the crazy city of Manila. And had a Filipino style Easter. We met some really amazing people there and they really showed us around and it was just a cool time. But now we're a bit partied out, so we're heading to uh, Apple Reef, which is just west of Mindoro. And then we're headed down to uh, Palawan and Coron, which we're really excited about, so it should be awesome. A few days ago, we dropped our mooring at the Manila Yacht Club and were met with an incredible sunrise as we motored out of the bay. Our friends Rhea and Aiden were with us for part of the trip. Rhea had invited us to our family's beach house for the weekend. Ocean front, of course. So we anchored Delos and were treated to an amazingly chill weekend with some crazy good food and great massages. But now it was back to just Karen and I on Delos, which meant me holding the camera while well, Karen did all the work. Why is it southeast when it's the northeast monsoon? Because we want to go southeast. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Awesome sail right now. We've just left Matuad Bay, just south of Manila, and we had a really awesome time in Manila. I didn't really know what to expect, but 